Hello, and thanks for joining us today on Around the Peninsula Holiday Show. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Liz, happy holiday. Happy holidays. It's This is amazing. Time it, of year. The it, countdown's here. It, it is. <laughs> I feel like we were just here, but it was a year ago, wasn't it? This yeah. beautiful Trump National Golf Club. The big tree is, of course, in the it lobby. It is and magical, sparkling. It is. All the decorations. It's so fun to come out when it's all festive and just enjoying everything about the holiday season, that's for sure. And how grateful. They have so many beautiful places to come here here in the community over the holidays. Yes. We're here now. Later on, we're going to go travel also down to Terranea. We are, and we're really talking about holiday experiences because I think that people will forget that really the gift of time is the most important gift, yeah, and that, we need to give that more. Although, of course, we are going to do some shopping. A little you bit shopping. see Marie and I not shopping during a holiday There would be show. something wrong. But the nice thing is we're going to travel to some gift shops that are nonprofits in exactly. the community. So you kind of keep giving the gift that keeps giving when you shop at some of our local nonprofits. Does that mean we just feel better about shopping? We do. <laughs> I think we buy Kinda. more. <laughs> I think we do buy more, actually. That's very we're true. We're going to do some shopping here, too. Right? In the, we're going to do shopping gift here. Gift shop at Trump. Yes, and then we're going to go to Terranea a little later, as you said. But for now, we're here at Trump National, and uh, we are going to also catch up with one of our very own city councilwoman, Mayor Susan Brooks, who invited us into her kitchen. She did. She did. <gasps> and when you're watching now, she'll already have, been, have the rotation of the council. And yes. She's a council member, but she's been a fantastic mayor for 2018. And she she's has. an amazing cook. Amazing cook. Yeah, it's going to make your mouth water. You're going to be hungry by the end of the show, that's for sure. Yeah. All right, when we come back, we will have the, the general manager from Trump National Golf Club, Lillian Meany, here on set with us. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And we are back and now joining us live from Trump National Golf Club, the general manager, our friend Lily Amini. Lily, thank you so much for being with us and having us today. Oh, you're very welcome. It seems like it's been like, what, just three months ago when you it, guys were here. That's yeah. what Liz and I said. A whole year. Can happy you believe holidays. it? Yeah, happy holidays. And of course, the lobby is just decorated amazing. Yeah. And the gingerbread house, tell us about the gingerbread house behind us. Pretty amazing, right? Yes. Um, our pastry chef and the pastry team worked their butts off to get this out um, on the same day that the tree was finished. Um, so they worked day and night on this and it's a major, major focal piece for the lobby. You know, yes. it's not just the tree anymore, now it's the beautiful gingerbread house and it smells amazing. It's so. Trump Village. It is. It is. Trump <laughs> Village. And you're his chief beautiful, Yeah, I was going to say yeah. yeah. Beautiful big houses, so it's, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. We're very proud of the team. So yeah. I know it's like such a busy time of year and really we were talking a lot about um, experiences mm -hmm. during the holidays, giving your gift of time and really the gift of yourself and coming to a place like Trump National Golf Club, whether you're golfing or just having a nice dinner or lunch with somebody, it's really so special, especially during the holidays. It is, because number one, it's, I mean, obviously the atmosphere lends, you know, kind of to the experience, but it's also, you know, for a lot of the locals here, it's to see familiar faces day after day, um, to wish everyone, you know, happy holidays, thank them um, for, you know, all of their business throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it is a great, great experience to be here, you know, whether it's summer, winter, fall, especially this time. I mean, look at the weather right now. Beautiful. You know, to enjoy a beautiful Christmas tree, beautiful weather, and familiar faces, it's always a positive thing. Yes. Yeah. Sure, for a lot of the families and the residents of the community, this is where they make tradition, traditions and memories, right? Yes. Like it's, but that's what it's about. Exactly. You want to feel like it's special. You can't feel any more special when you're sitting here eating an incredible dinner with the view and taking it all in and the sparkle that's all around us. It just... It's true. It's true, Liz. We have a lot of families that come out during this time. They they always package golf with dining. You know, mm -hmm. they come out and they say, our families are going to golf and we're going to have brunch. So or, nice. You know, so it, it's truly an experience year after year. You know, you and I were actually talking earlier about do we decorate our house? Oh, yeah. and, it's, and it's funny because I really don't because I'm working all the time. Right. But I, I love to come to a place like this where it's That's all right. decorated. I know this is the first year I'm not decorating because I'm yes. in Colorado for the holidays, oh, which nice. I've never done. So why, why am I taking them all out? So it's like... But it makes thing. you really appreciate yes. when you do go out, like, let's go have lunch at Trump because exactly. we can celebrate and feel like we're really <laughs> in the spirit. It's so true. You know, for the people that don't want to, you know, kind of decorate or cook or anything yes. like that, we still want to have them come in and experience all of that stuff that they may not have or don't have time to do. Exactly. Um, so we have made it, I mean, grand for them in every single way. So whether it's dining, whether it's decor, it's atmosphere, it's everything. We, we have it covered. Trust me, we have it covered. And shopping. You do. In the oh, and oh shopping. yeah. A little <laughs> shopping doesn't shopping. hurt anybody, exactly. right? I've already been in there looking. <laughs> Good. But I like that. I like that. Now, you're speaking of, of experiences, Christmas Day, there's dinner here. Yes. New Year's Eve. Tell us about all that. Absolutely. So New Year's Eve, we always have our New Year's Eve dinner and we celebrate on East Coast time. So 9 p.m. That's when we celebrate I love that. the New Year. That's nice. yep. yes. it's, it's great. 
Um, we also have a Christmas dinner, so we're very excited about that. We have our holiday tea, which is available all December. It's amazing. And then we have our uh, Sunday brunch. It's on the 23rd of December, which Santa will be here. And Santa? will make a surprise visit for everybody, so we're excited about that as well. No, tell us about the holiday tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. So it is holiday inspired scones, desserts, sandwiches, everything along those lines. We have our regular afternoon tea, but this is a little bit more um, than that. How it's fun. Just, yeah, it's kicked so up a notch for the that? holidays. The holiday it's throughout tea. December. Oh, wow. Yeah. I so love December. that. Oh, it's, it's, it's awesome. So we'll be taking a break for tea shortly, maybe? No, just, maybe. yeah, I love <laughs> you could, that. You could, yep. Well, it's just fantastic. like another fun way to visit with friends. Right, it is. And we have a lot of families come out, you know, a lot of mother daughters, they will come out and do that before the holiday season. So we're just, we're excited about that. It's, it's always a big seller every year. Now, when you, before you were crazy busy working, yeah. did you ever have trips during the holidays? Did you ever take trips during the holidays? No. Well, neither did we. No. Did you? No, we were always local. Home. I know. Yeah. It's which so is, true. Which is good. I mean, kind of, where do you want to go? You know, sometimes... I think I went to New York a couple times during, yes. during the holiday season. Right. It's always gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Um, but for the most part, I'm home. Christmas Day local, yeah. with family. Yeah. You're home. You're yeah. home here. And we and were we talking are. earlier. Lily, That's you've right. been on board here for, for the last 14 years yeah. now. Unbelievable. Year, it feels like it gets better. I mean, yeah. Has this been a good year for you? Have it you it has busy? been. Absolutely. It has been. And every year we end the year with, you know, a meeting with the managers and letting them know the great things that we've done, the improvements, and how we can even get better. So it is year after year we do get better because of those initiatives that we put into place. And man, managers work so hard, and the staff works so so hard. Um, so we just—I mean—that's really our goal every year is to get better and better. Well, we know you do that because you're always here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. Now you have a new chef who we we're going to meet. So tell us about him. Yep, Adam Christofoli. He is fantastic. He is, you know, a very very important figure, obviously, in the entire operation. Um, he's worked his way through Las Vegas, through Long Beach Convention Center, grew up in San Pedro, so he's a local. Yeah. I'm very excited about that, but he brings his creative touch here every single day. Um, seasonal menus are, are kind of hitting right now, you know, with, with mm, winter. And love that. Yeah, big tomahawk steak ready for, <laughs> Ooh, you know, um, the winter good. grub, and we have a surf and turf burger that our golfers love, but I think it's, it's important that, you know, we change up the menus, and he believes in that philosophy, so we're very excited to have him on board. You know, interesting that you bring up local, because because really, it's always been so important to you and yes. the Trump Corporation that this is a local establishment. It is. Talk about that. Absolutely. You know, I grew up here. So you I grew did. Up in San Pedro and RPV throughout my life. And I think it's, you know, the support of the locals that really keep this place going. Right. You know, we only have kind of one side geographically to kind of depend on. Yes. The other side, it's, you know the ocean it's the other <laughs> side of the hill that's right yeah. so we definitely and we're grateful for that too. yeah exactly oh, yeah, no, no, yeah. of course yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the great part about being part of the peninsula but right. it's also challenging as a business because you got to get them in right um so the locals have obviously supported us throughout the years and they are so important to us so we really really appreciate them coming out and celebrating some amazing experiences you know with us you know that we have weddings and we have engagement parties and then we have anniversaries and birthday. so busy everything you can probably imagine we have with, with all of our locals and we're so excited to see them every day very so, nice when yeah. you excited for going into the new year i don't really know maybe oh. you make a resolution or two or just <laughs> Um, prosperity. There we you know, go. That's yeah, a good one. We, health we, and health prosperity, and prosperity right? absolutely. I mean, for personally and for business. So yeah. we have to always look at life like that now, you know, in your own business, but, but personally as well. Very good. Yeah. Well, I think we're hungry now. Are we hungry? We are. Always. I can't are wait hungry? to meet the new chef. Yes. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back. Don't go away. We are back and we are hungry and sitting next to me now is the executive chef here at Trump National, Adam Christofoli. Welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. How are you today? We are so good, and we are even better because you brought out this masterpiece. Tell us about this. And we're always hungry here anyway, but mm -hmm. now you made us extra hungry. Okay, so <clears throat> this is one of our signature dishes, being that we're here by the, the sea. Yes. We uh, try to highlight a lot of seafood. And uh, this is actually one that's kind of close to my home because I'm Italian, and it has risotto. One of my people, it's very good. <laughs> and it has risotto, but it's a seared Chilean sea bass with a rock shrimp risotto, and then a lobster broth. Oh, that sounds delicious. Very simple. Um, we, I did some testing on it with a lot of the regulars and people that came in over a couple months, and then Lily and I decided to add it to the menu, mm -hmm. and it's been one of the 
the uh, top sellers of our seafood ever since. You know, Lily, you, we've talked about this before, that you actually ask some of the regular customers what they like. T tell us about that. Oh, yeah, every time. They're part of our kind of experience when we're working with menu mixes. You know, so, you know, again, they have the loudest voice of them all, you know, so we have to make sure that they are okay with things. And sometimes, you know, they say, well, add a little bit of this, add a little bit of that, and we're like, no problem, we'll do it. Uh, but it goes to our management team first, okay. and then we say, you know, go ahead and let the, you know, locals know about this and see what they say. And they're, they're perfect. They, they've added a, a big spotlight on kind of what we do on our day-to-day -day basis with our culinary work. And no. as long as you don't take the calamari off the menu. <laughs> we won't. That's our favorite thing. We can't. That's, that's, you a, can. <laughs> that's a Trump favorite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a Trump Absolutely. favorite. Yeah. And they're all yummy. And the signature drinks, of course, Liz, are beautiful. Yes, we'll be sipping oh, yeah. that later. Yeah. What do we got? We got it's like a little pumpkin. It's a, a pumpkin yeah. trumpkin? Yeah, trump <laughs> trump <laughs> trump <laughs> trump <laughs> trumpkin pie. Trumpkin pie. Trumpkin pie. That sounds amazing yeah. as well. Now, what are the, some of the favorite things that you make during the holidays, specific for Christmas and New Year's? Specifically for the holidays, what I like to do is, um, obviously Italians, we have Feast of the Seven Fishes. Exactly. So, like, um, you know, uh, charred octopus. Um, I like to do this shrimp scampi over, it's called alla paglia, which is basically hash brown potatoes that are fried. So and then you pour wow. the scampi butter sauce on top of it and the potatoes kind of soak it all up. <laughs> um, that, obviously, cioppino, right. fish stew. Um, you know, I'll throw a prime rib in there for the people that don't like the fish, always. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, on um, the Mexican side, uh, very traditionally, is tamales during the holidays, wow. especially around Christmas. So typically with my Mexican side of the family, we'll get together probably in the next couple of weeks on a Sunday, and we'll make traditional tamales, but I like to put a little spin on it sometimes, you know, instead of just the red pork, I'll do like filet mignon, barbacoa, Ooh, or yeah. like caramelized pineapples with chocolate chip, just something different, mm, yeah. experimentation, just to surprise people. Where do you get your inspiration? We started talking earlier, you started cooking when you were a little boy. Yeah. Uh, my inspiration truly comes from my grandparents, you know, um, food has the power to bring people together, um, families, people that don't know each other. And um, I believe it's a big part of who I am and my families and my cultures as far as Italian and Mexican. And we celebrated Memorial Day. Every holiday was celebrated. Mm -hmm. So that was a very big thing for me and my family, you know. And being the little kid on the stool in the kitchen <laughs> with, with, with my head, with my head, head with my head peeking up, looking at grandma <laughs> making stuff, you know, that, that was me in a nutshell. So. Did, did she let you help? Oh, all the time. Yes. All the time. You know, she talk, encouraged me to make mistakes. Well, you know, we oh, yeah. talk about holiday eating, but really when you're Italian, every day is eating, right? <laughs> For sure. Every day. Every day. Some of the, some of the better dishes were the one-offs she made like during the week right. or the piece of bread that had the margarine oh. spread on it back in the day. You know? <laughs> That's, so those good. are good memories. Those are good Very memories. Good. Now, you're from San Pedro, but you were in Las Vegas for a while. Tell us about that. I was. Um, when I, uh, I went to culinary school in San Francisco, okay. and from there I worked at Valentino in Santa Monica, and they opened a restaurant inside of... Um, the Venetian in Las Vegas, and I worked there for 16 years, and wow. I was the chef of a hotel and a corporate chef. I really got a lot of experience that set foundations for, you know, and prepared me for this job, you know, um, to bring all those different experiences and different cuisines and different ways to bring people through the door, you know, um, all that experience culminating here with this place, with this great GM, and yeah. just trying to bring Trump back, you know, this this place to you know food yeah. people obviously it's a golf destination right <laughs> yes we well, want people to come here for food too and they come here for weddings and oh, every yeah. kind of yes. life celebration right. all of that so you're always cooking and so, sort of like how, what's going to be your twist that you want to bring to the table um i like to just bring innovative food um guest experience food that they can enjoy yes. uh lily and i have talked about getting this nice <laughs> donut maker for our brunch on, on Sundays, yeah. like to make Wait, when does that happen? Yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah, <laughs> mini <laughs> donuts. Volunteer to be donut mini yes. mini yes. donuts in go. front of the guests. Just yeah. stuff like that for them to be interested, for them, wow, let's go there. Like, yeah. And we just had a party. You had mentioned to me about something that I did. Yes. <laughs> and I did uh, prosciutto, which I think everybody mm -hmm. knows, and cotton candy. I and yeah, I put the prosciutto on a stick and That's I wrapped it. it in cotton candy for an appetizer. It was unbelievable. And we do stuff like that for our parties all the time here. Wow. 
It's really, I guess, about you, you're just talking about trying something and maybe failing or succeeding. You never know until you try it. Correct, correct. Um, the, the management team, the senior management team, and the regulars that come in are very integral, integral part in that decision-making process. You know, ultimately, it, it's what we feel as a team, but... Um, the guest has such impact mm -hmm. and their words really resonate with us and with me as far as what they want, what they want to see, what they propensity for stuff that they'll like. Yeah, and, and kudos to, to Chef that if we do not like something, yeah. we do let him know and he right. doesn't take and it personally. It up, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So it works out very well. So you're very working well. on the holiday menu. You got a lot of exciting dishes, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes, for for uh, Christmas dinner, I did a little, just a little old school. I'm not in my own eyes, it's a little old school. Um, I did a whipped burrata salad with um, baby beets and green goddess mm -hmm. dressing and pomegranates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the main course is what I'm a little bit older school. It's a it's a, um, filet mignon Oscar. Very Nothing traditional. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Very traditional lump crab meat, jumbo asparagus nice. tips, nice filet mignon Bernay oh sauce, and then some truffled mashed potatoes to finish wow. it off. And then, come and back from Denver, yeah, that's right? Quite the a day. Meal. Right, and then our chef, our uh, great pastry chef Ron came up with a um, chocolate bread pudding with brandy cherries mm -hmm. for dessert. Well, thank you for spending some time with us, and um, we look forward to eating all of your uh, culinary masterpieces here. Thank you so Happy much. Holidays. I appreciate it. Happy holidays Happy to you holidays. guys as well. Well, a big thank you to Lily and Chef. How much fun was that? It was great. I think we need to toast we our need gift to toast? of the experience here. The experience at here National at Trump holidays. National. We love being here. It's so festive and so fun. But Liz, we're about to go shopping. At the, I'll drink to that. Yeah, we'll <laughs> I'll drink to that. At the library gift shop, and it's one of the nonprofits. Which is so nice. I keep saying when you shop at, at the gift shop at a nonprofit, you're like giving the gift that keeps giving. It really. just makes you feel and better about you, shopping. I said you found some great jewelry. I did. That place is amazing. That's why Liz wanted to go, but hey, I got stuck with the assignment, so it was okay with me. This gift shop has been in existence since 1983. And two of the people who started still work here. Now, why do you think it's so successful? Well, I think, first of all, the people are motivated and dedicated to what we do. Uh, we get very good pricing because there's no labor charge and there's no facilities charge. And we have jewelry buyers and gift buyers. And we have people buy different things. And we get very good values, and we don't mark up like a traditional store. And then all the profits here go back to the friends of the library. And that money, along with the book sales, keeps the library open on Sundays and uh, finances the free movies. I would tell you, go check and see how many libraries open on Sunday. Wow. So our profits just go to keep the library open on Sunday. We have a very big selection of jewelry, okay? And we have a very unique selection of cards. Uh, people tell us that the cards are priced right and they're, they're different than what you get in all the other stores. And then over here, right next to us, we have used books and we sell them at about a 90% discount, okay? And then we have gifts and we have gifts of different things for small children, older adults, you know, all sorts of things. So. The, the three things we sell are, are basically gifts, jewelry, and, you know, cards. And then, of course, we have donations, too. So. Okay. And I know that you're having a boutique. Tell us about that. The boutique we're going to have is December 6th. December 6th. Okay. And it's going to be from 3 o'clock at night to 8 o'clock at night. And we're going to have uh, cider at 3 and, and cookies and all that, and then be wine and cheese and all that from 5 to 8. And it's a, it's a holiday boutique because people like to do a lot of Christmas shopping here. Oh, you know, I was just going to say this is really the perfect place to come and find something unique for someone. Well, and, and a lot of people have been here this week trying to buy uh, gift exchange ideas and things like that. So uh, we've had a pretty good week of sales so far. So. Now, do you, are you the buyer or who, who does all that? Okay. I have three ladies who buy jewelry. Okay. I have one lady who buys the cards and two or three ladies who buy the gifts. And then we do some school supplies, but not very much. So we break it out by, based on their expertise. Okay. So the jewelry buyer, they know jewelry. They never really know jewelry well, and they know pricing. And it sells. So. And do a lot of, obviously, a lot of local residents know that you're here. You probably see repeat customers all the time. All the time. We get a lot of repeat customers. What's really interesting, and we're trying to do better advertising, and I've, I've talked to some people who've been in the library 18 years, and they never knew we had a gift shop. Wow. So I asked them why. And they said, well, I go to get a book, I go check out, and I, so now they know. So I'm trying to put little signs up educating people that we do have a gift shop here. Well, the Friends of the Library is an organization. Uh, currently, we have about 750 members throughout the, uh, the four cities here in, uh, on the peninsula. Uh, its purpose in life is twofold. Our mission is to raise funds 
for the library and to raise awareness of all the services and programs that the library has. So we, we do a lot of fundraising, obviously. We've just finished our campaign to raise $600,000 to build the annex, the teen annex, up on, which is going to be up on the roof. Uh, it, it will be able to house about 105 people. So it'll be the largest of its community room type facility on the hill. The Friends, uh, we pay for the Sunday hours here at, at uh, this peninsula. At, most libraries are not open on Sunday. We are fortunate to have this facility open on Sunday from 1 to uh, 6. And we pay for that. We pay for story hours for the all the little kids. We pay for the summer reading program. We pay for in all the internet upgrades. We pay for the magazine subscriptions that are all online. We pay for outreach to the seniors, uh, like to Belmont or places like that. Uh, we do special programs. We support the art program. We support music programs here. We support um, movies. There's a movie program every week. So we support all that. And it's, uh, it makes for a great community center. For the, for the library. I was just going to say, this library is more of a destination. There's always things going on here, and it's always busy. It is. If you look at the bulletin board out front, it shows all the community events that are going on, just not here at the library, but across around the community. And many of them are centered right here in the library. And the Friends of the Library support that, and we're, we're very pleased to do that. Uh, it is a great... I mean, you come in here on a... Tuesday afternoon and the realtors will be meeting or the the knitting club will be meeting or the quilting club will be meeting or the historical society or the just all kinds of organizations and the library is the community center and that's a great thing for us. And by the magic of television we are now at the Terranea Resort. Liz? It's so wonderful to be here. It's not the holidays without coming to Terranea and Absolutely. with us is our chief elf right. who is the community relations and activities director here at Terranea, Gay Van Sands. Thanks for having us here in your uh, winter wonderland. Yes. yes. Nice to see everyone. Great to be with you. Now, we are talking about experiences that people have during the holidays, not just gifts, but really the gift of experiences. Mm -hmm. And there's really no better place to come than Terranea for that. True, and that's absolutely what we're all about. That's I right. think we've all moved to a point where we've got too much stuff in our right? lives. So true. And we want to enjoy our families and, and do things together. So, yeah, we have a lot to offer. Tell us. Okay. Please jump in. Right. <laughs> well, our first thing is the Terranea tree lighting, which is this coming Sunday. So a great family occasion. Um, lots of performers, lots of kids, lots of fun stuff. Um, you can come make gingerbread cookies. You can um, enjoy, especially on this one, for our 10th anniversary, oh. $10 drinks as Ooh, a give back to the community. That's nice. So that's a fun one. And then moving on from this Sunday, when everything starts, we have a new activity along with our Breakfast with Santa next week on the 8th. We have gingerbread houses. So you <gasps> can come these. here and, you can, make and your own? you can decorate your own gingerbread house. How so fun is that? A new activity that we've brought in. Wonderful family. I know I've always done that with my kids I every love year. It. Yes. And I think they might, He's in their 20s, still want to still do it. Of course, everybody wants <laughs> everybody to do that. Do that Building right? it with graham crackers. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think these ones are quite solid, so we've actually made them in terms of the house, so all you have to do is decorate. There's no oh, construction fun. experience needed. Very so nice. That's pretty cool. That's yes. the baby um, to the big one. That's right yes. Look, look yes. at the difference. It's, yes. just, it's, it's pretty cool. Little, this is the, the baby to the Look yes. at this, yeah, which we'll talk about that later, right? <laughs> yes. yes. That is cool. It shows the scale of the big Absolutely. one Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and this is a great photo opportunity for families just to simply come and have their photos taken if they'd like to, as it is by the tree. And of right. course, there'll be a big banner on it this year saying celebrating 10 years, because that's a big deal. You talk about time going years. by quickly. I can't I know. believe it's been ten years. I know, and I think I've got to go to most of those tree lightings, which you always hold on the very first Sunday of the month. And yeah. I don't remember how many feet that tree is, but it's it's, it's enormous. Amazing. Do you know? I don't know. I think we we used. To I know think that. we have this question every yeah. year, and I need I need to figure it out. I but won't yeah. ask you how many lights are on it, but it's sparkle. Where it's does the tree huge. come from? 
we order every year. It comes from Oregon. Wow. Yay. So it's pretty exciting. It, it went Absolutely. up yesterday. In fact, there's a huge crane outside. Oh my gosh. I've got a still shot I can show you. I don't know yeah. if we can put that in. Absolutely. But there's a, there's a sure will. large crane. So then if we go to the following weekend, we have lots of fun activities that are new. This year we have um, these wonderful ornaments, <gasps> mandala that? painting oh, on nice. ornaments that we're offering. And we're doing Terranea trivets and card making. Lots Hi. of activities that can all be booked at the Experience Center and are available to locals as well as our in-house guests. And how fun to have something from Terranea that you can actually give as a gift or take home or make, which is yeah. so great. Yeah, uh, everything's personalized and it's about the experience of doing it as much as, as the, the giving afterwards. So yeah, right. there's Very so much, much to do here. Experience is not oh. just the holidays, but all year round, whether right. you want to come and golf or go to the spa. Mm -hmm. And so they have all sorts of fun <laughs> things for the holidays, of course. Yeah. And all our restaurants. So um, whether you want to come here for Christmas, whether you want to eat at Marcel, or fast forward to New Year's Eve, which is yes, approaching, uh, yes, we coming. have our family um, event in the Marine Land Ballroom and our big gala in the Palace Verdes Ballroom New Year's Eve. So all kinds of offerings for everyone. And should we book in advance? I would say oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. For all of these things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You can call anytime or come visit the Experience Center and plan your entire stay if you're going to stay here for a few days. You keep saying the Experience Center for our residents that might not know what that is. Tell them about that. Yes. Thank you. So, yes, rather than have concierge based in the lobby, which can get a little busy Crazy. at times, we decided to move all of our experiences and our booking services into something called the Experience Center. So, as you approach the front door, it's just on your right mm -hmm. and anybody Excellent. can direct you there and so many more fun things to do as Liz was saying here at the resort and I know over the summer we had a blast coming here and people were learning how to take pictures yep. and just all kind of fun things yeah all of our activities are ongoing and weather permitting but we have you can kayak yes. year-round if you want to we have archery which has been a huge success this summer how so good are you at that oh <laughs> I can do it I'm not good but she's I can a, do it she's a straight um, shooter she's a, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> I just say that as one of my team hit the bullseye Ooh, first time out. Very nice. So. And we talk about these activities. Obviously, when you come and stay at the resort, there's all lots of to do. But there's things yes. the community can do, whether you're right. staying here or not. All of our activities are available to residents yeah. in the community as well as our like in-house guests. Full moon guests. yoga. Yeah, full moon yoga fun. once a month, obviously, every time there's a full moon. So, yeah, just give us a call and we'll tell you what's upcoming or check on the website or, again, visit us at the Experience Centre and we can make all those reservations for you. But we truly encourage the community to get involved and Absolutely. come as well. Right. And also, we talked about earlier about all the wonderful, uh, I can't imagine all what the menu's like over the holidays oh, here. Amazing. But people can take, take out. Bring your Terranea dinner home. You're still doing things like that? Oh, yes. We did it at Thanksgiving. I think there were... <laughs> 56 to, to go oh, dinners over Thanksgiving. Yeah. So people came, picked their turkey up and took it home and served so, it. So, and we'll do the same at Christmas. So mm -hmm. you can have your Christmas dinner picked up and taken home and serve it immediately. Now tell us about this magnificent gingerbread house behind us because <laughs> it is pretty cool. It is very cool. It's one of my favorite things when it goes up. It came in the door literally an hour ago. So we are just finishing setting it up, but the pastry team have been working on this for several months. Right. So it's quite an undertaking. And Chef Perry, who yes. I think you've interviewed before, Many times. Mm -hmm. is in charge. And I think it's as lovely as ever this year. I said, I like the red tile roof. It's sort of very yes. palace -worthy. It's very palace <laughs> yes. yes, it is. Yes, it is. So nice. yeah, come take a look at it. Now, what's your favorite experience at the holidays? Oh, I my know. goodness. She I makes figgy pudding. I'm narrowing you down to just one, but. <laughs> you mean here or at or home? In home here, anywhere. I think like anything, it's about family, isn't it? It's about yes. being with people that you love and, and just sharing experiences, whether it's around the table or doing something together. Right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's about the people. Absolutely. Always. And I love the motto here about Terranea, yeah, making those memories, you know, yes. and Absolutely. doing that. And it is about bringing community together. And you said this is 10 years in and you've had a spectacular years, which is yes. we appreciate as a city Absolutely. in RPV how much this you contribute to our community. Well, Not thank just the dollars, you. but just the relationship building that happens here. And can we call yeah. it a six star by now? It's not just four or five. I think it's a six. <laughs> not quite that, but we, we're trying. We're trying. We and need we're to go to there. the spa. Oh, I love that. Right? <laughs> Especially after the holidays, you need to go to the spa for sure. We have a new restaurant that just opened at the spa. Wow. Okay, it's let's hear about that. Soul Viva. 
and it opened yesterday. Well, so congratulations on yep, that. That's very exciting. So we're always looking for new ways to grow the experience here at Terranea and ensure that people have something new and interesting to do. Very nice. Well, Gay, thank you so much for spending some time with us. And when Liz and I come back, it is more Around the Peninsula Holiday Show. You know, it's always so festive here at Terranea. I love being here during the holidays and we can shop here. And Liz, you had an experience to shop though at one of our very favorite places. I know, I just was right down the street from Terranea at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. Yes. Great museum, place to go see, whale watching, and of course, an amazing place to shop. They have a gift shop, as you know, Maria, we've done oh. a lot of shopping there. Yes. That has something for everyone. And wait to check out their ornaments and their holiday gifts. You're gonna wanna go down there and get shopping. Very unique, for sure. Hi Liz and Maria, welcome to the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. Uh, we have a lot of things going on this year, we're really busy, um, but we're excited to show you our gift shop and what we have in store for the holidays and it's a great place to come and visit. We're open every day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The only days we will be closed is December 24th and 25th. So it's a great time of year because the whale migration uh, starts December 1st and it goes to the middle of May, so there's lots of things you can come down and check out. All right, so as soon as you walk into the Point Vicente Interpretive Center, we're right outside the gift shop and our statement piece here is our beautiful tree. Um, you can see on the top, we have a lovely statement piece. It is a peacock tree topper. Obviously, we're really known for that here in Palos Verdes, and so it's just a fun way to kind of remember your experience and your visit here. Um, we do have several other ornaments that are some of my favorites, um, one being the blue sea urchin. It's really fun, it's really pretty. Lots of bling for the holidays, you'll see. And now we're inside the gift shop here and we have such great gifts for everyone. You could literally find something for anybody in your family, your friends. Some of the great things that we have is obviously more beautiful ornaments inside. Um, some of my favorites, we got a mermaid and a merman, um, as well as lots of jewelry, books. Um, other items include home decor, glassware, um, apparel, anything you can pretty much name it we have lots of hats people love to come and hike here as, as you can see i have one of our great uh, new hiking sticks it's made in the usa um, but lots of hats because if you're outdoors you do want to make sure you're getting that sun coverage but you'll kind of see as you go throughout the gift shop that all of our items are really locally themed marine themed um, the nature the history geology we really carry that out because that is kind of our purpose here we want to educate and share our, our knowledge with everybody and here you'll see a lot of our beautiful home decor pieces um, one of the things I love is this beautiful dish. It's actually made out of recycled glass. It's made in the USA. This is perfect for if you need a little thing by your sink to put your rings in or on your nightstand. Uh, we also have cute soaps that you can put in uh, by the sink in the bathroom and just dress it up for the holiday season. And lots of sculptures that feature other marine animals. Whales is a big one for us, obviously with the gray whale migration kicking off here. Um, people love to get a whale souvenir. So now as we come over here, we do have these beautiful, magical paperweights. Um, it is just a special gift that you can give to someone and they're under $20, so they're a great price point. And who doesn't want to curl up on the holidays with a great book? Some of my favorite features here are on Palos Verdes, and they're actually written by our docents here at the museum, the Los Serenos de Point Vicente. We have several authors like Joe Koch, um, Ginger Clark, and Jim Schneer. Um, it's just very educational, and it's a great takeaway, and if you want to just freshen up on, you know, what's going on here and our history. We have lots of wonderful kids' books, and one of our best series here is Octopus Rex. Um, there's three versions of it, but the one that a local author, Barbara Hart, she's based in Rancho Palos Verdes came out with just for the holidays it's Octopus Rex Saves Christmas so this is a fun one for the kids and it's just great for this time of year. If you really want a great takeaway from Rancho Palos Verdes, we've got a lots of great apparel here. Um, one of the best picks, I think, is this custom Point Vicente shirt. You can see the Point Vicente lighthouse in the background. We have all kinds of clothing for women, kids, um, men, obviously wonderful hats that also have our name drops, so really kind of something you can take away. Now we're in the kids zone, and let's face it, everyone, we know the holidays are all about the kids. We have plenty of gifts for them. I love these little stocking stuffers. You can find a plethora from little bath squirts to a little fun um, sandbag marine life, little mini binoculars if they're too small to go out and actually whale watch themselves. I know that's a lot of fun for them. And lots of wonderful plush. We have almost every sea life you can imagine. You can go big with a great big orca. Or we have these fun ones, like for the little ones, who wouldn't love a little mermaid or turtle in a purse? I think this is one of the best takeaways you can find here. And um, we also have a dolphin in a purse, so there's plenty of options for the kids. What is there not to love about this gift shop? It has so many unique 
items in here that you're not gonna find anywhere else except if you go to the beach and who wants to fight that crowd, you can come here, look at the migration of the gray whales. The gray whale season is coming up in December. What I've done last year when I did my Christmas shopping, I bought a lot of these Christmas ornaments, one of a kind, you don't see these as much. You have like, oh, like the whale, there's the whale right there, it's sparkly whale that I have friends that now are starting to collect items like this. Maybe this year they'll put a sea star on it or maybe a seashell. But what I love about this gift shop, if you look around, you'll see things and items here that you won't find anywhere else. And one of the things we're really excited about here, coming in March, we are getting the Fresnel lens from the Point Vicente Lighthouse. So if you are a lighthouse enthusiast, please come by and check out the new exhibit. Um, as you can see, we also have the passport booklets. If you want to go around um, the local lighthouses, we do have a brochure and information on that. Um, but other things featuring lighthouses like these wonderful mugs are one of my favorites and a custom uh, Rancho Palos Verdes Point Vicente lighthouse mug as well. All right and now we're over by the jewelry where we have lots of great picks. Um, we have plenty of options whether it be for kids. Um, some of the great things are our shark tooth necklaces. Another fun one is the mood ring sea life. Kids love that, um, but we have lots of reasonable price points um, from higher end, a little bit jewelry to just something if you want a little sparkle for the holidays. And now as we wrap it up at the gift shop, I just wanted to highlight some of our staff top picks all under $10 that you can get here today. We have Little Gray's Great Migration, so if you're out here for the whale census, that's a great takeaway for the kids. Um, we also have these lovely home decor items, the trinket dish, as well as um, a popular one is this votive holder ocean theme with sand inside and shells it's beautiful and if you're really looking for a piece of jewelry i mean what where can you get sand dollar earrings for under ten dollars i mean we have something that's in everyone's price point uh, our other big feature is obviously our ornaments we have such a plethora and they're just so fun sparkle obviously if you're in palos verdes you know about the peacocks and the point vicente lighthouse ornament as well as our lovely sea star that is lots of bling as well can't forget about gary the shark that is a fun plush for kids. And if you want to get some RPV swags, we, we have mugs, we have little what we call talking sticks, and they just kind of reminiscent of your visit here. And on behalf of myself and all the team here at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center, we just want to wish everyone a happy and safe holidays. We hope to see you here in the shop and visiting the museum. As a reminder, our hours are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. So that's even on the weekends, you can come and stop by and just take a tour of things and enjoy your visit. And Liz, it looks like you had a very big bag of ornaments that you got from the Palos Verdes Interpretive Center gift shop. I cannot leave there without not just one ornament. I think I bought a dozen. And what I love to do is when I get, we get invited to places over mm -hmm. the holidays, is I'll take one of those ornaments and just hang it on a bottle of sparkling cider or wine. So nice. And it makes a great hostess gift. You're done with the bow. And it comes right here from the Point Vicente Interpretive Center gift shop and supports the local community, so it's good. Very Shop nice. local. Shop local, for sure. Now, it's always fun to eat during the holidays, right? Of course. And new recipes are always really fun. Yes. And we have a very special segment coming up with our now mayor, but she will be city councilwoman again, Susan Brooks, who invited us into her kitchen and showed us how to make something that I'm still thinking about because it was so delicious. I think I could smell it from here. Let's right? check it out. Let's check her out. Thanks, Liz and Maria. Great show you have there, by the way. I wanted to uh, welcome you all to my house. I'm Susan Brooks, uh, currently mayor and soon to be councilwoman again in Rancho Palos Verdes. Uh, we are at my house and we're getting ready to prepare a bacon butternut squash risotto. Now you say that three times fast, you'll have a hard time. The ingredients for this are relatively fundamental. You're gonna have six cups of chicken broth. You're gonna get a cup of dry white wine. I'm using our Rancho Palos Verdes 45th anniversary Chardonnay right now, but a Sauvignon Blanc is very good as well. You'll need two tablespoons of olive oil. You're going to need two cups of peeled butternut squash. I buy it in the bag or you can cut it up yourself if you're really strong. Um, also, uh, to uh, half a cup of finely chopped onion. So I'm cutting up this onion right now. I use a chia pino onion. You can use a brown onion, or you can use, this is a regular brown or yellow onion. But for, for a better, sweeter taste, I use the chia pini Italian onions. And they are very small and they're delicious. You find them in gourmet restaurants now in the antipasto section. 
And uh, we also use um, two cups of arboreal rice. Arboreal rice is actually what makes risotto. So this is what constitutes risotto. It's not jasmine rice. It's risotto. It's arboreal. You can also use cal, cal rose rice. So we're going to have two tablespoons of butter and we're going to have about a quarter cup of Parmesan, um, actually really finely grated Parmesan cheese for this recipe. So that's pretty much the ingredients that we also have here for extra added sensation. We have a couple of tablespoons of fresh rosemary. It smells so good. And then you dice this up and this is going to go into the mixture. And toward the end we're going to add uh, a third of a cup of diced roasted pecans. And sometimes I'll use some pine nuts. They're very, very good in this recipe as well. So that's all the ingredients for this. And now we're going to get started. So the first thing we do is we're going to start with the all of the... I've already begun this, so just so you know, I've already used the six cups, this plus two other cups, of the chicken broth. And that chicken broth is hot together with the wine. So it's heated up. And at this stage, I've already begun, I've already cooked the bacon. The bacon is the first thing you have to cook. But before you cook the bacon, you're gonna do something that you'd never really do with a pan. You're gonna take some nice olive oil and you're gonna put that in the pan. And then when you, you're gonna, then you're gonna put the bacon uncooked in the pan. I know that seems like a lot of oil, but it's really not. So I use about six slices of thick bacon for this recipe. And it, I, I find that this really gives it the, the texture and the richness that you need. So you're going to fry up the bacon. Then you're going to take your, your onions. And the onions that we, I used a half cup, I actually used three of these little chiapini onions. So um, I've cooked them all and I've just put them into this pan just to get started. So I'm going to put this on medium heat and you're going to saute these things together. So you start with the bacon and the olive oil and you get the bacon cooked first and then it's about five minutes. So after that five minutes is up, then you're going to go back to it and you're going to add your onions and the butternut squash. So you put the butternut squash in the onions and it's going to start looking a little bit like this, which is really yummy looking. I'm going to start adding some of this broth and wine combination. So this combination actually gives you, you know, chicken broth has salt in it. So you've got a lot of natural salt coming into your recipe this way, which makes it special. The salt, you know, it's one, there are four tastes that you have. Do you know what they are? They're sweet, salt, bitter, and sour. Now we know that when we deal with the, the, the solid food we have, but we also know it from the liquid food, such as a wine would have those tastes. So the next thing that we do is we're going to cook this and keep adding, I'm going to keep adding more as this has to cook down. So we have to wait for this part to cook through. That, and that's the beauty of risotto and arboreal rice is it really takes a while. It's not instant rice. You're never going to get the same flavor. So we're almost done with this wonderful risotto. It's, you can see it's plumped up. It's very soft and that's how you know it's going to be done. And the butternut squash has also gotten soft, but it's still a little chewy. You can still chew it. So it's very good. I'm going to add some salt and pepper. I'm going to just go like this to it by taste and then I'm going to add some pepper according to taste, stir it around, taste it. But while I'm doing this, I want to tell you a little bit about my grandmother from Italy. She's from a little town outside Naples called Avellino and these recipes come from her kitchen. She um, was mm, the inspiration, the matriarch of my family. And so uh, she was only four feet ten in stature, but she basically ruled not only her six children and her husband, who was six feet four, but she also uh, she also was a great inspiration for all of us. So I'm very thankful for having my grandmother and my mother, who was also an outstanding cook, never gave us recipes. 
my mother, but my grandmother did. Anyway, so the next thing we're gonna do, now that we've got the salt and pepper in here, is I'm gonna put this whole quarter stick of butter. It's like, it's just a stick of butter. You see these, this is how you buy them in the grocery store. I'm gonna stick that in here, and I've got a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese here. I'm gonna just stick a couple of, one, two, three, four of these in here, four, four handfuls. And then I'm going to mush and stir, and it's gonna get really rich and really delicious. And we're gonna have this. You see how the texture changes and the color changes. This is gonna be really good. We also have the salt in here from the bacon. So remember, bacon has salt, and just put a little bit of salt in because of that. And also there's some salt in the, um, this is low sodium though, chicken broth. So if you're a salt lover like I am, you might want more, but if you're on any kind of medical challenge program, it doesn't matter. You, don't, you just get low sodium, you don't need the salt. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and um, put a little bit, and put a little bit of these nuts onto it, this, some of these pecans. These are roasted, diced pecans. I'm gonna throw in a little bit, just for the heck of it, a little bit of these pine nuts, which pine nuts have that nice supple um, texture. I'm, I love texture in food. So we're going to now, mixing this around, I'm gonna taste it first. I have to taste it the cook's way, from the, directly from the pan. Very good. And we could put a little bit of rosemary in it. Or you can also use sage. Sage is also very popular in this. So you can just stick your rosemary in as you move along here. And I'm just gonna use a little bit in this recipe because the butter is really, really taking the majority of the flavor. And then I'm just going to spoon it up to one of, another one of my Mackenzie Child's wonderful dishes that I collect. And spoon this onto this bowl. This is probably a good, this, this will serve easily eight to 10 people. So this is a nice big portion here. And I'm just going to take a little taste here actually. When you do that, take a little bit more Parmesan cheese and sprinkle it on the dish just like that. You could put a sprig of rosemary on the top or you can actually just put a sprig of sage on the top as well. It'll give it some flavor. I might add a little bit more pepper to this, but mmm. Mmm, manja. Thank you for coming to my kitchen and I hope you can do this wonderful recipe with ease. If you don't, you know how to contact me. I'm on the city council. So, buona sera. Thank you, Liz and Maria, for all you've done to um, help make our city great. God bless y'all. Wow. I don't know whether I should try to make the recipe or we should just have Susan make it for oh, us. Oh, no, we should go back to Susan's house because she made it great. Are you it kidding? It was amazing. It yeah. was amazing. Well, that will do it for this year's holiday show. Liz, thank you so much for, of course, being here. I and love being with you, Maria. Always fun. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Yes, and Merry Christmas. And we're going to leave you actually with some very special holiday greetings. So until next time, I'm Maria Soreo. Happy New Year. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. See you next time. Hi, my name's Gabriella Yap, and I'm the Deputy Sea Manager for the City of Rancho Palos Verdes. I just want to wish you and your family happy holidays this 2018, and a happy new year as we enter into 2019. Good evening, this is Judy Mitchell. I'm the Mayor Pro Tem in the City of Rolling Hills Estates, and I'm here to wish you all a Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year, and Happy Holidays. Hi, I'm Steve Wallowich. I used to be somebody here, I think I was with the City Council, at one time, and maybe even a mayor. I'd, I'd like to wish everybody a happy holiday season. Um, may all the things that you wish for come true, and for some of you, uh, keep them to yourself. Wishing everybody a happy holidays here at our annual holiday party. It's the best thing on the hill, and uh, 
can't wait for everyone to enjoy their family and friends, their loved ones, and this season of giving. Let's make it last all year long. Hi, I'm Ann Shaw, and I want to wish everybody a happy holiday. Hi, my name is Alaya Sassoon. I'm Public Works Director for the beautiful city of Rancho Palos Verdes. I would like to take this opportunity and wish everybody very happy holidays, very prosperous year and health, and I hope that everybody has a great time. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Eileen Hupp from the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, and on behalf of all our local businesses, we want to wish you happy holidays. Hi, I'm Eric Alegria, City Council Member for the City of Rancho Palos Verdes, wishing you all, family and friends, residents of Rancho Palos Verdes, a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I'm so honored to serve you and wish you all the best during this holiday season. Thank you. Good evening, Rancho Palos Verdes. This is Mayor Pro Tem Jerry Dehovic. From my family to yours, we'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy Kwanzaa, whatever it may be. Happy New Year to all. We are all very blessed to live in Rancho Palos Verdes. God bless everyone. Hello, I'm Audrey Smith, and this is... Hi, I'm Stephanie Valencia. Well, happy Holidays. Welcome to PVIC, and Happy Holidays. Hi, I'm Jennifer Addington, the director at the Palos Verdes Library District. And this holiday season, I'd like to wish you a very merry holiday. And if you're looking for that something special gift, please stop by the library shop. Center Library. And remember, you can always give the gift of reading. Every single one of our libraries, Peninsula Center, Malaga Cove, and Mira Lest, have a book sale. So if you're looking for that very special gift for that very special somebody, stop by the library. Greetings, friends and neighbors. This is Susan Brooks. I've been your mayor this past year, 2018, and it's been a very, very productive year. And we look forward to a wonderful 2019. This has been my third time as mayor, and third time was a charm. But we look forward to our last year on this council, next year, my last year. And I look forward to working together for this community, with this community, to make us the best we are for our little paradise, Rancho Palos Verdes. This is Corey Linder from the city of Rancho Palos Verdes Recreation and Parks Department. I want to wish everybody here on the Hill a Happy New Year and a very Merry Christmas. Hey John Crickshank here. Happy Holidays to everyone in the city. Uh, I've had the honor to be a city councilman over the past year. It's been a wonderful year in our city. Everything that uh, I would have hoped for to be a part of the city council is even better than I thought. And it's all because of great residents like all of you out there. So everyone have a great uh, Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays to everyone. Enjoy the uh, weather that we always have and go out and hike on one of our great trails. I want to take this time for everybody, not only in RPV, but in all the world, to have a very, very happy holiday and a Merry Christmas. And God bless all people of goodwill. Hi, I'm Barbara Ferraro, former mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes. And I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad because I'm still teaching Spanish at the high school. And Feliz Hanukkah, that's spelled with a J. And I just, it's a wonderful time of year. And I hope all the best for a brand spanking new year filled with love and happiness and wealth and the time to enjoy them. Hi, my name is Lieutenant Mike White the LA County Sheriff's Department, Lameda Station, and on behalf of the Sheriff's Department and all of the personnel at Lameda Sheriff's Station, I'd like to wish you a safe and happy holiday season and a prosperous new year. Hi, I'm Don Swanson of the Infrastructure Management Advisory Committee, wishing you and your family a very happy holiday. Hi, I'm Bob Nelson, and it's my pleasure and privilege to be a member of your Planning Commission. And this Christmas, I'd like to join my Christmas elf over here, Jim Guerin, and wish, wish everybody a very Merry Christmas, all the best this year, and let's just pray for peace. Jim? I've been so lovely introduced by Bob Nelson. <laughs> My name is uh, Jim Guerin. I'm the chairman of the Traffic Safety Committee, and I wish everyone a happy holiday season, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and be sure not to drink and drive and obey the traffic laws in the city and have a safe new year.